Hey everybody, Dave here on Syndicated Pipe Club once again. How y'all doing tonight? And as always, I have with me Greg. How you doing tonight, Greg? Better now that I'm back from the land of uh, the almost dead. Yes, um, and from what you've been telling me just before we started recording, it sounds like that was a nasty bug that went through your house. Yeah, no, I, I found out after, uh, but I ended up having uh, stomach flu that took me and my wife down. Uh, thankfully, my son was okay, but, uh, like, you know, besides uh, just the general nastiness that comes with the flu, just this, like, really awful fatigue, and, like, I did not have the just uh, the ability to to do much uh, like it, I was out of the garage and for like a good five days uh, from it um, but uh, you know thankfully it was just uh, you know it, it wasn't too major and then found out that I come to find out that it's something that's kind of going around here so uh, it wasn't like a, a fluke thing but uh, or, or COVID or something now, but, uh, I, I would have found that being funny if it would have been COVID. Not because I want you to have COVID, of course, but given the fact that you've already had both shots, that would be funny. Yeah. Ironic. Yeah, no, well, that would have... Right. It would have just been just like, really? We're going to do this now? Uh... Yes. Yes, we're going to do that. We would... Oh, just been horrible. Get, get the vaccine. And, oh, now you have COVID. But I didn't get COVID before I got the vaccine. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, that would, uh, that, that would really sound get me, uh, That would settle the conspiracy nuts and loopy. Right. Uh, cue the X-Files theme. If I had it, I'd put it here, but I don't. Yeah. Speaking of what I don't how have going you? here is music. Yes. But uh, how are you doing? Oh, not too bad. Nothing on the level of of what you've got going on. Yeah. Well, but uh, on a positive note, I did uh, get out of jury duty. Um, not because of the sickness. I just called the day before and they said that my service was complete. So hmm. uh, I was like, hey, you know, like for once, life uh, actually kind of gave me a break and was like, uh, you know what? You got a rough couple of days. You don't have to take the train to Chicago spend all day in the court, courthouse yeah i yeah, know nothing nothing too special going on here we uh we've uh just been you know dealing with canada's dealing of the covid situation I mean, especially in ontario where we're the worst off of the whole country because our leader yeah, uh, yeah you can't uh, shake someone's hand without getting a fine Oh, my wife told me something. That, that this is going to be funny. And, and I know you all will laugh. All of you will who are listening and watching. It's just funny. What our illustrious premier did, he just recently, last week, announced, two weeks ago from the time you actually see this, his uh, grand plan for opening Ontario back up for business. And it's cautious. And yeah, okay, fine. Be cautious. That fan is actually interrupting us here, Greg. I'm going to do something about that. Okay. Uh, I'll turn off the one that's closer to me, so. How's that? Ah, oh, much better. Just every once in a while, I was picking up on your mic, and uh, the music just wasn't covering it. It was too loud. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll uh, I'll have that one moved to a different location. Trial and error. That's all it is. It's staying in. I'm not taking it out. So sorry about that, everybody. It's just with music playing in the background live, it's too uh, hard to change that in post. But right. anyway, back to, not... back to Doug Ford. Back to Doug Ford. So he, 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 he put his plan through 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 to Parliament in order or whatever the provincial portion of that is called. Provincial Parliament, I guess. Because our system is so much different than yours, and I don't even understand it. I live here. Um 
And they, they go through and they read the bills, which I'm assuming you, your guys in the Senate and, and whatnot do too. Like that makes sense. That you, you read it. And the opposition to his government found that he tried to sneak in another seven months of unlimited power for his, uh, for his government. So that was fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, no, um, there have been governors that have tried to do things like that. Uh, I, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, uh, Virginia, uh, over in Virginia, because the Democrats had basically like the whole, um, like all, all the seats that they needed. They tried to pass through uh, something where like, if you got the governorship, you got to eight years as governor rather than four and like all this insane kind of stuff, but uh, because word kind of got out and there was a fervor, uh, they didn't, it didn't pass. But um, even with just COVID, like there have been states that have just simply gone on and just straight up revoked some of our governor's uh, emergency powers because they uh, over abused it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, need, needless to say, the while well, the the plan for opening the province back up got passed, that that particular section didn't. I'm glad they caught that. Yeah, I was like, man, Dougie, you really want to be a one-term premier, don't you? Because he's gonna put this conservative party here in disarray. I mean. I wouldn't be surprised if Ontario is liberal next year or next election. Now, is that, um, are the parties reversed kind of like in terms of like the, um, what's Trump? Conservative? That's Ford. Hmm. That's strange because, like, in the United States, like, the majority of the conservative, uh, you know, governors have been uh, very resistant to like the lockdown kind of stuff. Okay, well, you have to understand about Canada is we are a semi and and I'm on to all my Canadian people that may be listening as a fellow Canadian. This is just my opinion. You can disagree with me if you want. I don't care. But the way our government set up, this is a true statement. We are a semi-socialist dictatorship. We get to vote for what dictator we want every seven years, and we don't have a truly conservative one. Mm -hmm. Because we have, once we vote, we have no control over nothing. You guys at least get to vote on laws every once in a while. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's not fun. But anyway... Enough of that. Uh, what are, yeah. Uh, what are you smoking tonight? Well, it depends. Um, I'm smoking uh, my Deluxe by Savinelli. And it's got a mixture in it tonight. It's uh, mostly uh, GLP's Stonehenge. But the bowl was a little bit bigger than I thought. And the flake I got wasn't quite tall enough to fill the whole bowl so i had to top it off i only had about a quarter of the bowl left at the top so i started it out with uh, some dunhill 965 and by the looks of where i'm at is i'm right about at the transition where it's going to start going into the stonehenge what do you got going on there uh, t uh, tonight I just have some uh, Lane's Ready Rubbed in this um, uh, Royal Danish uh, billiard here. This was like a, one of the earliest pipes I got for my collection. It's been a very good one for me. It's the first estate I ever bought, uh, but it's a great pipe. Um, went with something a bit light tobacco-wise just because I haven't had dinner yet and uh, still want to overdo it with uh this on the strength department <clears throat> and ready rubbed I, I think is pretty uh pretty mellow i have a english blend uh up on uh up on deck for uh you know once this goes out yeah i've got an english blend on deck too for after this goes out if i make it that far because folding stuff you know i might not be actually switching pipes tonight So, 
so yes. So it seems to me that the last time we talked, I tried to give a proverb at the beginning of the episode. Or thought I did, anyway. Something to do with the parallel universe and Flash and all that stuff. But anyway, I remembered what it was that I was that I was trying to say. It's one of those things where you just go... When you're, when you're in a situation, you have to think to yourself, are you so blinded by fighting that you can't see your that your own ship is setting sail? Very wise. And given that happened twice in this episode of Avatar, maybe it should be a proverb. Yes, that was uh, uh, something that uh, Zuko should have uh, paid more uh, uh, paid more attention to and uh, given more heart to. Yes, just a little, just a little. One of those things he got—he got instant karma there when he was laughing at the pirates, and then they took his ship. Right. <laughs> oh, but yes, we're uh, starting our second attempt at uh, talking about this episode, which hasn't happened to us too many times, but uh, <laughs> last time we did and we realized that we couldn't, uh, uh, that, that we didn't have the recording. We were just like, oh, yeah, we, we, can't we, had, we had video and I'd forgotten to turn the audio on. So, of course. I didn't notice because I don't always pay attention to the little sound bars going on on the screen next to me that, uh, hey, people will be able to see us, but they won't be able to hear us. Maybe I should have kept that footage and we could have just, you know, dubbed something else in it in there. Like, I don't know, like kind of like uh, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. Huh. Or, uh, um... Uh, most extreme challenge. Something totally ridiculous. But I already deleted the deleted the the raw footage because well, yeah, I don't need that gigabyte of space taken up by something I'm never going to use. Yeah. No. Oh, um, speaking of Yu-Gi-Oh, there's a, remind me there's a shirt I need to send you uh, a link. I think it's a, a limited like print run shirt, but it's of. Uh, Yugi's grandpa trapped in the TV with the um, words of Yugi underneath it. And uh, I was just like, oh man, <laughs> so many memories of that. So, this episode of The Avatar, now we should get actually get on that we've been talking for 13 minutes and have barely touched this episode. We should uh, get on to. Uh, Onto it. This episode's called The Waterbending Scroll. And in it, we find Ang and Katara trying to practice some waterbending. They haven't made it to the North Pole yet, but Katara's just being nice and saying, I can show you what I know. I don't know much, but I know a few things. Let's get going, get you some learning. It turns out that even though Ang is not a waterbender, he's just naturally talented. Yes, and picks everything up like right then and there, much to uh, Katara's annoyance. Which I think we have all kind of uh, been there with something, whether it's like uh, playing it, you know, you're, you're playing a tough video game and you hand it to someone and you're like, here, you know, it's this is kicking my butt. You know, I want to see it, you know, kick your butt as well, or let's see how far you can get. And they immediately get past it. Yeah, I have that problem when I'm playing Sea of Thieves sometimes because I know a lot of the people that are playing that game are gamers. And I'm sure there are some out there that are like me, just playing it on an off-the-shelf rig with uh, uh, off just a cheaper one gig or two gig or you know cheaper two or three or four gig graphics card, whatever you can afford at the time, but enough to still run the game so you can have some fun. And then you, when you're when you're playing and you come up against uh, another set of players, you've got somebody running. You know, a full-on gaming rig, so their lag is less than yours, and and whatnot. So, what people don't understand when they're doing playing things like this is you have to remember that the equipment at your end also limits your abilities in the game somewhat. 
But that fraction of the sec of a second could mean the difference between your sword blocking and you dying. Right. So yeah, that's why I typically yeah. go and make sure I try to avoid other players. I understand. Yeah, it's a uh, for my time playing Dark Souls online. Uh, unless I was dueling, it was always a. Uh, whenever somebody invaded my game, I pretty much, you know, chalked it up that I was probably going to die. Just because of usually they were playing around with lag and. Uh, and other things to get an advantage. But I mean, anyway, like, um, so like I can, I definitely can relate to Katara in this episode with uh, just kind of, you know, you know, you, you want something so bad and uh, somebody, you know, takes all of your hard work and essentially just uh, kind of gets it like that. And, uh, just the frustration that comes with it, which uh, sets up the, for the rest of the episode, uh, the events are going to happen. Because uh, we go, because uh, they need to get some more supplies and everything, and uh, uh, are regrouping, well, uh, gathering supplies at the late, you know, closest town. And when they discover uh, a ship, that's well, a peddler that's... Uh, Asking, well, uh, that uh, invites them aboard for some uh, good deals, uh, especially since uh, you know, Aang uh, kind of wasted their money. Uh, well, what looks to be wasting their money on uh, a whistle to uh, get uh, 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 what's his name? I don't know why I'm, I'm blanking on his name. The um, Buffalo Papa. Uh, there, there we go. Appa, basically a whistle, uh, whistle for Appa, but uh, you know, whistles it, nothing happens, and everything. Which, you know, we as you know the audience, you know, we know that that's not going to be that way forever because uh, you know we're, we're just used to concepts of stuff like dog whistles and everything. But on, uh, so they end up going onto a pirate ship where. Uh, well, what they figure out is a pirate ship and uh, lots of different stolen goods. But one of the things that uh, Katara runs across is a uh, waterbending scroll. Yes, which which does lead to an amusing little exchange between Aang and the head pirate. Because they only have two copper pieces and they need 200 gold. Ah, yes. The bartering, yeah. What do you say to one cover piece? Then they de they definitely had fun with the the pirate voices in this episode. Cool. I just put this. I got to show you this. It's okay. going to come up on on my camera, so you, you'll well, you might not be able to see it, uh, but. I'll show you later, but I'm going to show everybody else here when I pull it up. I've got, a, oh, that opened up right over you. There we go. For a second there, you looked like my, looked like my uh, file explorer. Okay. I've got a picture of one of my sons. It's amusing. Ever since I started playing Sea of Thieves, they, they've gotten really into the whole pirate thing. Now, I just got to remember where I put it. That's the whole problem with having these ideas, like, right, right off, uh, just randomly when you're doing something and it's not pre-planned. You got to you fill time while you're, you're searching yeah. for where, where you put everything. works 
I'll put it there. You all of a sudden became my son. <laughs> That's very really cute. Okay, so what we have here is my son. This is Alex, and he has a Timbit, empty Timbit box on his head. And I was in the middle of watching a YouTube video. You can see, actually see it in the, on the TV in the background. And uh, he said his name, and he was Captain Timbit, pirate. So this is Captain Timbit. R. Exactly. Great. Now I'm going to have to put, when I put this thing up on YouTube, I'm going to have to put something about there being a kid in the episode now. Uh, don't forget to blur his face. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> That facial recognition stuff doesn't take effect yet. We'll talk about True. that more at the end of the episode because I have a few things that uh, we need to inform the people on. Mm -hmm. But um, really, really uh, and so they don't have the money to buy the water scroll. And Car uh, Katara makes the decision to steal the scroll, which ultimately... Uh, ultimately you know directs the course of the episode because uh yeah it probably wasn't a good thing to do and uh because even though uh you know pirates are you know stealing from pirates uh you know can kind of uh you know that ask that question later but uh certainly they don't like it and uh they're going to uh make sure that uh, you you pay for it mm -hmm. and uh, pay they do yes they do because as usual Aang, uh, um, Zuko and uh, Uncle Iroh are uh, close by and uh, as they usually are in each episode and uh, Uncle Iroh uh loses a uh, tile for his Mahjong style game, forcing them to go to uh, the port. Pie Show. The name of the game is Pie Show here. Hmm. Gotcha. Um, you know, and it's funny though, just because like, uh, it, it almost makes you wonder if Pyro is subtly guiding Zuko with his mission, you know, acting the fool and, and being kind of like the, the comic relief and everything, but uh, uh, is trying to help his nephew out and, and kind of do things where he would gain the glory for it and Iroh would just, uh, uh, even though it was because of something Iroh did, uh, kind of uh, you know, steps back so his nephew can uh, get uh, all the glory for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and in some parts later on down the road, I think that that is absolutely the case. That is happening. But I, I'm not sure if that's actually happening um, now. Well, it's like, uh, well, not every, not necessarily every um, action always works out, but, uh, you know, thinking of, uh, hey, you know, we're, we're close by to a port, I'm just going to do something so we, we go to land to kind of, you know, scout for information uh, to see if the Avatar's been here. It, it kind of reminds me of, uh, I think there was a, a Foxtrot cartoon uh, or a comic, uh, which was a uh, newspaper strip that I enjoyed um, where uh, uh, the young son is trying to slip past his mother to uh, I, I, go, I think uh, go uh, play games or just do something and she goes uh, Jason, oh, well she goes, uh, go back and do your homework and he's like, oh man and goes back up and then the, the last panel of the script uh, has her just randomly like saying it out loud uh, with no one there and so 
you know, the joke being that uh, she just says it out loud randomly at in different intervals, just uh, in case he's behind her and trying to sneak past uh, as a, you know, just a, a way to make sure that she gets him and that he does his homework. Uh, so this could be like a situation where it may not necessarily pan out, but uh, hey, you know, Zuko may not do this on his own and we could uh, end up, you know, going further off course if we don't check this out. So that, that's just kind of like my idea with that. Wow. Yeah, no, I agree with uh, what you're saying there. Uh, what I was doing while you were ta talking is just popped into my head that I was wondering if uh, Pi Show was actually a, a real game or not. And it mm -hmm. was uh, invented specifically for... Uh, for Avatar, but the fandom has actually built rules around it and created the game in, in, a, in a way. I was just looking at uh, one uh, game board with piece with pieces that look identical to the ones like um, that are as as they are pictured on the show. I mean, somebody spent a lot of time. It looked really good. That's fandom for you. Same fandom that will translate the Bible into uh, uh, Klingon. That kind of uh, dedication, which uh, I appreciate. Oh, I appreciate I, that I too. I, I don't have <laughs> the dedication to do that, but uh, I will gladly uh, thumbs up anyone that uh, does something like that. No, I don't have the dedication to do that either, but if there was one out there that was for sale and affordable, I would have one. Same with the Bible being translated into Klingon. Just something about that speaks to me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that happened. Pretty sure I've heard that. Why not? They translated all the work, the Star Trek fandom translated the works of Shakespeare into Klingon, so all off of a random line from uh, Star Trek 1, 2, 3, 5, I think. Oh, nerds. Such a wonderful group of people. Yeah, now I want to go watch Star Trek. <laughs> 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 Maybe tomorrow. So this, um, this waterbending scroll it, uh, it teaches the smooth uh, the water whip. Yep. And uh, uh, which, you know, is useful because it's a good offensive, uh, you know, a kind of attacking move and everything. Um, and when Katara, you know, reveals that she had it, it kind of puts uh, Aang and... Uh, and her brother at uh, odds because they know, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a questionable thing to do, even if it's pirates. Um, and in a way, it's, it, <laughs> it still leads to frust more frustration for her because Aang immediately picks the move up and Katara doesn't. Not only does he pick the move up, he instructs her on how to do it properly. <laughs> That's got to be frustrating. Right. And uh, ultimately, you know, her, her frustration with it, it leads to uh, her going off to, to practice at night when she should be resting, you know, because it's she's obsessing over it and puts her in a very vulnerable position to get caught. Yeah, and this, this episode does uh, also, for Zuko anyway, to demonstrate the character's uh, tactical thinking. Because mm -hmm. as they're traveling down the river where the pirate captain wants to go and check the woods, he goes, no, he don't want to do that. They stole a water bending scroll, so they'll be on the water. Duh. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, Zuko is definitely capable. And you know, certainly he has 
you know, inexperience and, and everything and is a bit rash, but he's definitely formidable and he's definitely like a, a good consistent threat for Aang this, this first season. And, uh, and even with, uh, but, but there, there's definitely a whole lot of different dimensions to him because, uh, you know, when they, they catch Katara and, uh, Zuko talks to her, you know, he, uh, shows her the necklace that uh, he had from, uh, the, the two-parter mm -hmm. that she had lost. And, uh, uh, they talk for a bit and, uh, in a way to kind of start uh, building, uh, you know, a little, even though I wouldn't say it's, you know, anything more than just kind of like kind of a back and forth kind of thing, but they, they kind of at least get a, a chance to know each other a little bit more than just, uh, you know, your generic kind of, uh, you know, foes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And yeah, that, that continues to happen uh, with them throughout the series. Right. But of course, that's where we lead, get led into the big climactic battle of the episode. Yeah, and that's uh, and really this is a, a lot of like a, just a lot of fun, uh, you know, action styles where it's you know you get some pretty good fighting, but also a lot of comedy too, such as like when there's a whole lot of fog around in the uh, fight and. Uh, Aang uses his wind powers to blow it all away, only for him to reach because he's trying to find uh, uh, Sokka. Sokka, and uh, only to realize they're both kind of surrounded by pirates, and it's just like, uh, whoa, whoa. And, uh, Never mind, I'll come to you. Right, and you know that's just you know, show has great sense of humor, oh, yeah. uh, which I greatly appreciate for. Uh, yeah, you know, for an action show, it uh, you know, and it, it doesn't feel too silly. It, and that's where it's uh, kind of like insults your intelligence, right? Just uh, just good, fun, classic gags that I appreciate. Yeah, me too. And it, it's one of those things, you know. For all intents and purposes, this is a kid show we're talking about, and you need those gags in there for the kids. But it's also enjoy enjoyable for the parents too. Right. Also, something interesting that I uh, noticed today about Avatar, the last Airbender series that we're currently working through. You know who one of the directors and whatnot, and the, or executive producers and whatnot on the show was, or is, or was? Ooh. Dave Filoni. I was actually, that was the name that was in my head, but I was like, uh, I'm not sure, cause just because, uh, he was just so connected to Star Wars, but I'm, you don't just end up on Star Wars. No, you, you, end you up do not there just for... end up on Star Wars, <laughs> unless you're Kathleen Kennedy, you just end up on Star Wars. Yeah, yeah Kathleen Kennedy or her writing group that she created, uh, but, uh, you know, pre all that nonsense, uh, yeah, you don't just suddenly end up on, you know, in some sort of creative uh, uh, role in something as established as, as Star Wars. So you have to build your cred up. And I can't think of a better show to, to build your cred up than with uh, Avatar. Yeah, that's all these years later when it's, it's in syndication and, uh, you know, uh, on all the streaming services and and whatnot. It's got its fandom of uh, dedicated fandom of its own. We're still talking about it, and it's still relevant. I mean, I was uh, a couple weeks back looking through some of the comments and whatnot, and responding to them, uh, you know, on uh, on YouTube there, and uh, found one. I believe I mentioned it on on air a couple weeks back. Um, the comment from uh, Markwood Men's Breakfast Club, uh, where uh, 
Seth Markwood had commented on uh, one of the episodes we'd done. So that's my there, there's my point right there. Like he's around our age and still likes the show. So yeah, for sure. You know, that kind of makes me think. Well, I I guess it'll lead to a question that I'll ask after we we finish. We'll, we'll wrap up the review, and that kind of gives me an interesting question to ask you. Okay. Um, but uh, the one thing I forgot to mention about was uh, that the pirate has a the head pirate has the pirate captain has a great little uh, animal companion that's a rival for uh, Momo, which is. Uh, this lizard parrot thing and it's uh, you know definitely uh leans into the whole dinosaurs uh became birds kind of thing right right and so you could see this as like a little tiny raptor kind of thing and poor momo is, is just trying to escape and everything whenever they fight and uh which leads to some you know little amusing you know chase sequences with the two of them Mm, definitely. Yeah, but uh, ultimately, you know, Katara is able to do the the water whip and uh, works together with Aang to uh, push the the ship away. I think from the shore was it? Yes, they push and pull the water up on it so they can launch the ship from where the pirates had parked it. Right. Was it towards a waterfall? It ultimately ended up going towards a waterfall, yes. But, uh... Okay. I just rewatched the episode, like, uh, about two hours ago, so it's very fresh for me. But yeah, yeah. When, when they launched it, they ended off uh, downstream, they ended up going towards a waterfall, they ended up ultimately going towards a waterfall, and, uh, this is where we see Aang uh, finally get the, use the whistle and get some payoff, giving up a big rescue scene. Yes. And uh, poor uh, Zuko and Iroh are left alone. And just sign is when Iroh uh, finds his missing keys. It was in my sleeve the whole time. And he's standing there with a goofy grin on his face, and all Zuko can do is grab the tile and throw it, because all the <laughs> ships had won over but over the waterfall. It's a long walk back to his ship. You know, if we're as capable as those two are throughout the series, I often wonder how they get anything done, because all those end up marooned. Right. Or captured. In this, in the first season, well, you have to. It allows Aang and uh, the gang to escape and have a moment's rest and uh, catch up, so that we can. Which is usually where we tend to find them at the start of each episode, or traveling, or camping somewhere. That's it, yeah. Uh, you know, Katara kind of learns a lesson, although she's like, stealing's wrong, except when you do it to pirates. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll give her half a point there on this test. Yeah, she, she gets, you know, 55%. Right. Because, well, stealing is wrong, unless you're stealing from somebody who stole, so... I, I kind of agree with that. If, if it's stolen property and you steal it from the person who stole it, then... I mean, you're pretty safe. True. Very true. At least from the law. Yes. No, yeah, overall, just, you know, fun little episode, and we get a, you know, a little bit of uh, understanding, kind of uh, the, the whole bending type of... Uh, you know, how they pass bending down from one another one to another doing more so than just kind of uh in-person instruction so uh you know i i appreciate those little details coming in mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And that pretty much is where the episode wraps up. They fly away on the back of Appa and... We pick up the pick them up again in next week next week's episode. Yes, that I did not watch. <laughs> well, with our tangents and whatnot, we filled out the time uh, pretty good, so yeah, we'll be all right with that. Um, yeah. So now, I guess uh, now we're done with the reviewing. Uh, you had a had a question you thought of? Yeah, no, just uh, seeing that uh, Dave Filoni worked on Avatar and. Uh, May it made me kind of think, you know, because he, you know, ended up moving on to Star Wars, which, you know, might have been what he originally wanted to do and everything. But it made me think because you know, here we have Avatar, which is this original property and, uh, you know, it gives you this uh, ability to just create this world and, and everything with it and establish something new. And, uh, you know, you see, and kind of what I was, we were talking about earlier with how, you know, people kind of, you don't just end up on Star Wars uh, or uh, any of the big projects. You kind of have to earn your cred. And usually that's with doing something original. And mm -hmm. I see a lot of people that, uh, you know, do something original uh, and then move to a, a big kind of franchise and kind of stay there. And uh, I guess my question, because I know, you know, you're, you, you know, you definitely have a, a creative side to yourself and everything. Um, do, you, do you think, you know, if you were ever, like, in that position, if you were given the choice to develop something of your own or work on something that uh, you're a fan of that's been developed, something like a, a Star Wars or a Star Trek or something similar like that, uh, would you do this something that's established or would you continue trying to make your own mark with uh, original properties or your own or something that uh, you would help get, or continue developing something that original you had created well this is going to be a really interesting reference to make here but I would probably go the route that Seth MacFarlane went. Yes, I'm referencing Seth MacFarlane, Family Guy, Ted. Some of the basis shows you can you can watch. But Seth MacFarlane at one point wanted to helm a new Star Trek series and pitched it to Paramount. And they did not go for his take or, or whatever. So he adapted the show that he had come up with and produced it himself. It's called The Orville. I've watched four episodes of it now. And yeah, there's some definite uh, Seth MacFarlane style humor. Not that nothing, you know, nothing, you know, in the, in, in the way of Family Guy or Ted. But... Uh, Enough to, you know, you, you see his brand of humor. and But I could see where he would actually have been a good person to run a Star Trek franchise. Because he plays the captain of the Orville, and I don't know if he went in as, a, as a fan of the, the IP himself, um, studied, you know, Kirk and... And, and Picard and all the captains and whatnot to prepare himself for the role of the captain of the Orville, but I could see him as an official Star Trek captain. He, had, he has the jargon down, he's got the mannerisms down, and yeah, sure, you know, there's, there's a bunch of his humor that comes through, but, you know, for the overall procedural portion of it, he had it. Like, I, he has it. And I've been enjoying the show. It's one of the few shows of Seth's that I actually am enjoying watching. Yeah. You know, not an episode no, I've, here uh, and there, but it's good. Yeah, no, I've uh, seen both seasons. And, uh, you know, like, I don't have a huge, uh, you know, 
background with Star Trek, but I, I know enough of it. And uh, I was left, and, and with Seth MacFarlane, like, uh, you know, I found some of his Family Guy stuff funny. Uh, then, you know, it just, I kind of fell out with it. Uh, he was certainly talented, but like stuff like Ted never really appealed to me, and neither did his cowboy movie. Um, but, and, you know, I went into Orville, uh, the Orville, I went into it simply because it was so, like, all I heard was really good praise about it. Like, everyone was just raving about it. And I was like, well, you know, it, I'm not a, a big Seth MacFarlane fan, but I'll give it a chance. And, like, I think everyone that's a, even a little bit of a fan of sci-fi should uh, watch that show because it is so good and it uh, has so many great episodes. And like, I I'm really happy to hear that you're watching it because it's such a, a cool show. And you definitely see, <laughs> like this is this is a show that uh, is inspired by Star Trek, you know, oh, kind definitely. of like everywhere on it, but uh, you know what they do their own thing with it and uh i feel like it it's kind of like a uh the best show like that in a very long time mm -hmm. and i think that if uh cbs in a way i'm really glad cbs passed on him to do something original like this and i i have to give him credit you know he he nailed it and i think he should be you know proud of what he's done whether the show i, I don't know if the show is going to continue or not all well, because of uh you know the disney fox merger but uh you know kudos to him he made a great if those are the only two seasons that this show makes that's still a you know it puts it in a top tier sci-fi show that people can watch oh for sure and uh, from what i've seen so far um i would agree if if there if a season three shows up on disney plus where i can where it is right now i'll watch it yeah because, so would i because my god it, it's better than some of the some of the official star trek fair that we've had recently like discovery and just to name one Yeah, no, and I think uh, Discovery kind of uh, ended up, uh, like, from season two, I think they, they kind of started adding a little bit of humor to it because of uh, the Orville success and uh, uh, and everything, and realizing that, oh, <laughs> like, oops, we, we kind of made a mistake. Maybe we should have had uh, Seth do his show for us. Yeah, maybe. I, maybe. Maybe it was even Discovery that he wanted to helm. I don't know. But uh, right. if uh, if it was and they said no, they screwed. They definitely screwed up. They definitely screwed up. Because yeah, I think if Seth would have had that show from day one, it would have been a great show. Yeah, uh, top tier. Like, like it would probably you know it would be probably spoken in the same, uh, close to the same you know reverence as uh, the next generation. Probably. Yeah, no, I just, uh, I thought that was, a, you know, an interesting kind of question of, uh, you know, just because, you know, you see people like Abrams, like, like Abrams, you know, he, you know, he kind of did something similar for a while where he's like, you know, this is my Godzilla movie, you know, this is my E.T. movie, and kind of, but doing his, uh, you know, maybe a little bit um, well, I guess it's probably in the same kind of like shamelessness as uh, the Orville, um, although I would say the Orville was, is more successful of uh, being its own thing. Um, and then he ends up uh, doing Star Wars, uh, for better or worse. And, uh, you know, it, uh, to me, like, uh, like as a creative, like, yeah, I think I would want to stick with you know, do, doing something like that or just doing original stuff because like I just uh, I don't know I 
I would rather work on my own stuff and uh, try to, you know, forge my own path, even if it means doing something that isn't as successful or remembered as, uh, you know, Star Wars or uh, Marvel or, or any of them, just because I just, uh, I, there's just something fun about doing your own creation and doing your own uh, and, and making your own path. And I th wonder if Dave Filoni would ever consider doing his own kind of projects. You know, certainly like if you were to leave Star Wars now, even though uh, hypothetically, because he's not leaving anytime soon. No, no. no. But, uh, you know, if he went to, you know, left and went to like uh, HBO Max or anywhere, it's like, hey, like I'd like to do a show. You know, certainly they would be like, yes, please. Uh, but, you know, probably trying to veer him towards uh, something established. But uh, you, you wonder if he would rather, you know, if there's something inside of him that would still like to do something more. That's not that Avatar is his baby or anything. He just, you know, he worked on the show. But uh, if there would be, if he would have much more of an interest in doing something that's a bit more original. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. No, I just thought it would be a you know fun little conversation and a uh, little uh, insight into our uh, philosophies about creation and everything. And, and that's a good good point to segue into the not so fun part of the episode, where we have to talk about YouTube's terms of service for a moment. So, if if you're watching and or listening and you've gone to uh, the Syndicated Pipe, Pipe Club channel on uh, YouTube. You may have noticed that the content has shrunk quite a bit. Like all the old stuff from the, when I was running it as Maple City Pipe Channel, it was just me. It has been taken down. And a lot of that has to do with YouTube's new terms of service that I keep getting bombarded with in my email. Like they're sending them nonstop. Like I've had, and I, now you have to understand, I've had this email so many different times, but. I've got about three or four email addresses attached to different YouTube channels as a creator that uh, have to get these. So once per email is fine, but I'm getting them multiple times per email. And basically, the terms of service are changing. And uh, there's one thing in particular that I don't like and one that I have a little bit of issue with. Now, YouTube is saying now that in the terms of service, to start with the smallest issue, um, something to do with some facial facial recognition. You now can't collect information without getting permission to do so if it's not just you. Like, so, Greg's here with me. Obviously, he, he's, by, by being here, giving the permission um, to use his image, basically. Like, facial rec, if someone wanted to use it, because they could use it on him and figure out who he is. Same with me. Although you're more likely to get Dave Allen, the old comic comedian from the 70s, or Dave Allen, the, um, uh, there's a Dave Allen that's a public speaker that comes up. Like, I'm so far down on the search results in Google that you, you will never find me now. But there, there are a lot of more famous Dave Allens than me. And, well, yes, I, I, I see where they're coming from. You, you would think that by virtue of being on a video platform, you realize that, you know, people are going to be able to find out who you are if they really want to. So, that's uh, what we were referencing a little while ago when I put up the picture of my son on, uh, on the screen where you guys could see it. Um, but the real problem isn't that. That's something that we can work around easily enough. No big deal there. Just, I don't like it, but it's not a deal breaker. But this, this next one is a deal breaker. Uh, as of June 1st, YouTube is uh, changing their terms of service so that they can monetize everything. So, you know how you go on YouTube channels, like from creators who are part of, they're big enough and part of the partner program where you see the ads right before the videos or after or, or, or mid-roll if the video is long enough. Like at recording right now, we're coming up on 55 minutes and, you know, you'd probably, if uh, our channel was big enough and part of the partner program, we uh, probably would have had a few ads by now. 
Well, now what YouTube's going to be able to do is put ads on any YouTube video if they decide to. Now, that, what that means is whether you're part of the partner program or not, your video could have ads on it. Now, partners, they're going to get paid still. But if ads show up on here, on this particular video, we would not see any of that money. Not that you make much, from what I understand. But that's not the point. YouTube wants to profit from a small channel like ours and give us nothing. This is your payment for being on the platform. So I've taken down the old stuff, which up until I took it down was still directing and directing traffic to this channel. So we might lose some traffic because of it. But in the end, if I start seeing ads on the videos that are still here, because I uh, have a have a a profile where I don't uh, I don't use it for creation or nothing. That's just where I watch my channels that I watch that I follow, and I follow my own channel just to make sure the videos go up on time. So every once in a while, I'm going to start watching uh, watching my own videos just to see if an ad shows up. And if if an ad shows up, Greg and I've already talked about this off camera. We're going to pull off of YouTube. And um, we do have now, as of this week, a, a Facebook page that I made up. It's uh, a, co a combination. I've called it Dr. Alien Productions. So you'll find these on that page. I'll leave a link to it down below if you want to find it and mark it on your Facebook, just in case. Um, where this will show up, my, my gaming videos that I do sporadically will show up there as well. That's why it's Dr. Alien Productions, not just Syndicate the Pipe Club, because I'm going to do everything on that as a backup so that the content is still there because Facebook, as far as I know, and having reperused their uh, terms of service at this time, are not putting ads on the videos because really when you think about it, Facebook already has so many ads throughout everything else you do anyway. They're probably making enough money that way. So that will be our backup for now. Because I haven't been able to find anything else that will let me upload properly. And, uh... Also, we have reestablished a Instagram where you can find, uh... Find, uh little ads and whatnot like 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 you do like I was doing before on uh, my old one which, which couldn't make work I was I, I realized I was forced to bend to the to the rules that they were setting up so to make it work properly so that is uh, dr. alien 201 on Instagram you can uh, go there and you'll be able to find um, little uh, thumbnail ad type ads with a if I can make everything work properly like I did with this week's There'll be little, uh, little ad, like, you know, little, like, uh, the, basically the thumbnail that you see at the beginning of the, uh, like, before you click on the episode with a little snippet, like, 30, 40 seconds worth of audio from the episode on it. So, that will be going out on Instagram, and I'm going to put those out on the Twitter as well. So, new stuff. Just wanted to, but I wanted to for sure let you guys know, if we do disappear from YouTube, we'll be around on Facebook. At least for the moment. Yes, until we find a, a better place to uh, put our video content on. Yeah, and and, and that pretty much ends uh, ends the episode. It's it's not a it's not a fun note to end an episode on, but you guys needed to know. Like we we've got around 170 uh, subscribers to the YouTube channel, so. And I'm sure most, if not all of you, have uh, a Facebook uh, profile. So find us on find us on uh, on Facebook too. That way, you know, you've got more than one way to watch the content. Because we're still going to make the content. We, we're, we're primarily uh, a uh, podcast or podcast first, but uh, the video is just kind of fun to do too. Because we can do it. I can do it at the same time. It's absolutely really easy. So 
with that, we will end the episode. And if you want to follow us, you can always keep up with us throughout the week on Twitter at Dr. Alien 201 for me. The show is at Syndicated Pipe. And the Facebook page is uh, Dr. Alien 201 Productions. Link below. And I'll put the link to the Instagram too so you can find it. I'm not sure what the whole link is, but it, it'll be there. Greg, where can the people find you? Find my Twitter at uh, underscore Badger Piper. And my Instagram as uh, one word of the Badger Piper. And so you can uh, just kind of follow my little updates here and there when I post. And of course, you can always send us an email to reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Please, please send us the email. Please. Or you can tweet at us or uh, comment on our videos and uh, we will uh, definitely uh, message back and uh, may even uh, chat about it on the show. Absolutely. So with that, we will wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Ciao to you later. <laughs>